Welcome to Crunch Time, a program dedicated to helping you survive the crunch times in your life, whether they are caused by accidents, natural disasters, poverty, economic recession, depression, or all-out economic collapse, or whether they are caused by your realization that today's food supply is being contaminated by artificial fertilizers, pesticides, and genetically modified organisms and over-processing of crops into what can hardly be called food. We want to help you through the crunch times in your future by teaching you what we have learned about organic gardening, food storage, and food preparation. We'll bring you into our kitchen and into our garden and share with you what we have learned, hopefully, before your crunch times arrive. Now here is Chef Francois. Here's Ruby, guarding her nesting box, with all the babies inside, making sure nobody gets close to them. Pull that down to make sure we don't have too much of a breeze going in there. done their thing. My sis over here is wrecking around a little bit. Oh, she's pulling out the food. You're not allowed to do that. You're getting it all over the floor. How are you going to eat it if you take it all away? I'm going to have to get a different. I have to get a different uh, feeder for her. Let's see, I've got this one here I could take out. Well, my cherry trees I've got planted with these buckets and internal clear plastic thing inside. And nice day today, so I'm going to let them get some sun. So I'm going to water them quite a bit. Could just water them through the top hole right here and then just leave them in there. But I'd like to see them get some sun, so I'm going to uh, take those off. Well, I've got two of these chicken tractors, and I'm going to convert one, at least, into a rabbit tractor. And in order to do so, I've got to have something on the bottom to keep the rabbits from being able to dig and get out. So, most of the ones I've seen on the internet had wooden slats, the length of it, every four inches a one and a half inch slat. Well I went and bought all the materials for that and looked at it and it was eighty dollars and it was so heavy I said that's gonna double the weight of my chicken tractor. So I decided to return all the wood and get some of the this wire mesh fencing and I've got half of it on already 
What I did is I just stapled it to the the uh, bottom of these braces and on the sides of the sides so that when I pull it on the grass it's still sliding on the wood and it's not catching on all the metal. And here of course there's a wheel sticking up so if this catches on the metal on the end it'll just be a little bit. So I've got to put one more on this side and then I've got to weave them together in the middle. And uh, I think I'm going to stand it up to do that. So that's what I'm doing. And we're going to have a rabbit tractor when we're done. I also got to make a wire across the top of the back here where the uh, tarp hangs over. Because just a couple nails holding that tarp, when it opens up, end up being right on top of there. And there's nothing blocking it here. So a fox could get right through there. So I'm going to put wire there that hinges down and hinge it up and then pull the tarp over to hold it in place. And I'm going to work on that after I get the bottom finished. Okay, I've got the fencing on both sides of the bottom of my uh, chicken tractor or was chicken tractor now going to be rabbit tractor now I've got to sew this seam together down the middle so I've got it propped up on a ladder here and I'm gonna get under there and zip tie with these zip ties zip tie that together so it'll be steady and then uh, we'll be ready to go okay <coughs> I got the floor complete in the rabbit tractor. Got it sewed together in the middle. And uh, use zip ties. Now all I gotta do is make a cage for the end over here. Make sure that uh you know, let's open it up and see here bungee cord and a few screws holding it down. Nesting boxes are fairly clean. Feed trough is clean watering dish we could clean out a little bit I guess that's the hard part of this whole rabbit tractor is going to be how am I going to catch the rabbits when it's time to take them out because, gee, I can't get in there and run around. I guess I could pick up this end of it. I think I'll put one more zip tie right here because those are separating a little bit. I pick up this end of it and they all went to that end. And then open up the end, I could reach in and get them, I guess, or something. It's kind of hard to pick up this end, though. But anyway, I'm gonna reach in and put one more zip tie. Well, three apple trees we already had planted up there, and then where the white buckets are, cherry trees, and then down on this end, I just planted three more apple trees. One of which cost a hundred dollars. I only paid, I don't know, less than $10 for these cherry trees and $12.99 for the apple trees back there. But the one down here is four and one. Four different varieties of apples all on one tree. Plus it's grown more, so it's it's already got leaves on it. You can see it down there. 
these buckets are cherry trees. And then the three mounds down here are apple trees. One is a red delicious, and then the four and one. Here's a four and one right here. And uh, a golden delicious right next to the uh, patch of asparagus. Speaking of which, I'm going to eat this one. So, if the frost doesn't come and kill it, that is a hundred dollar tree. And one variety here, another variety here, another variety there, another variety here. And they cut the top off. Actually, one of the varieties might be this one down here. So, that's what we got today. Sore feet from working. Up here in the garden section, I have started growing some cool weather crops. We've got lettuce, two different kinds in this first row. Uh, we've got kale and spinach in the second row. Sugar beets in the third row. And the fourth row I just did today. And I did uh, two rows of carrots and one row of mangles, giant yellow beets, as fodder to feed to the chickens. Down here I planted, replanted the onions that started growing in my cellar. You can see them right there. And in this row down here, I planted giant rutabagas that I had in my garage over the winter. And uh, hopefully at least two of them will grow so that we can get some seeds. Oh, I do have plenty of seeds I haven't used. They're getting old. So the onions look good. Further down we got strawberries, two rows. Two rows of garlic that died over the winter because they didn't have any snow covering them. Two more rows of strawberries. And down on that end I got two rows of strawberries down there. Hopefully it'll rain tonight and give the strawberries some water. I don't know where my hose is it away last fall and I can't find it. Alrighty, <laughs> let's see what we got for little buddies down here. I see a nice dark one and a nice light one. Here's a nice dark one. Another nice dark one, a nice light one, another nice light one, a gray one, and a gray and white one. They're all doing pretty good. You guys are cute! Gonna make a nice little batch of bunnies. I like this one too. She's a good mama. <laughs> this one's got to get her nesting box. Tomorrow. You're right. You're going to get your nesting box tomorrow. Can you get her out? I can. She upset that you were. Oh my gosh. Here's a light colored oh, one. Oh no. Oh my goodness. 
Oh, There's a dark colored one. How many are there? Oh my Six. god, they're adorable. Another light oh. one. Are you taping? Yeah. Oh. The gray one. Another gray one. Another dark one. Okay. Should be a spotted one in here somewhere. Oh, we're sleeping pretty well, so. Well, our doe hasn't had her babies yet, but she has prepared her nest nicely. How you doing, honey? You look back in there, and she's got a bunch of fur on the bottom, way in the back. Probably see it pretty good over here. No, it's covered up. Paul's little baby here, she's got to leave soon. Got to have him come pick her up. This one will be getting a nesting box in a couple weeks. That's Argyle. She's got Michael Moore. Mott Sis. Got her nesting box. And she's starting to pull hair. A little bit. By Friday she should have her babies. Here's Ruby. And her babies are doing just fine down in there. So I'm going to leave them alone. Maybe give Ruby a little bit more feed and water. Just weighed this little boy right here. And he weighs five pounds already. And Argyle, who's pregnant, haven't weighed her right lately, but in a couple weeks she'll be having babies. And of course, Vermont Sis. We'll be having babies uh, Friday. Today's Wednesday. Let's go see how the two bunnies in the tractor are doing. One sitting on top, one sitting in the middle. Bunnies are cute. Alright, let's check the banana plants. Let's see how warm it is in there today. Not hot, but 59. Got down to 50. Some of these are they're growing big, but some of them are having problems. This one is the same as this one when I bought it. And this one's starting to have black spots, and that one's still growing slow. These other ones over here, which are dwarfs. Are uh, doing fair, I guess. All right. Notice I've got the chicken tractor removed from the greenhouse. I had to catch all the roosters and put them inside. And my main rooster was such a pain to catch. 
lost all his tail feathers right here. Caught him and then he got away while I was opening the cage door. Lost a bunch of wing feathers or belly feathers or back feathers over here. So I caught him again. Finally he hid in a little cubby hole between that freezer and those bins over there. And nice and quiet, I reached in there and grabbed him and he fought and fought and fought and I had to hold him by the neck. Finally got him into the chicken tractor, dragged the tractor out, and uh, while I was moving it around outside, I yanked on it once, picked the front of it up just a little bit too much, and this guy scooted right out from underneath. He was on the outside for a while. I put a, a fence up to try to corral him in. He flew over top of the fence. Put this up. He flew over top of this. And uh, I finally got him caught inside this section here. I don't know how I'm going to get a hold of him so I can bring him out to the chicken tractor. But the hens are inside the chicken coop complaining. And... Uh, rabbit tractor I had to move over a little bit so anyway I did find out how many bunnies uh, Vermont white had and she only had two two bunnies I don't know if we'll be able to see them but no they're all covered up with fur this little guy belongs to Paul you gotta come get him Got the two over there in the tractor I gotta figure out what to do with. And uh, this one and this one are gonna be having babies in the next couple weeks. This one here should be in the next couple days. She's just sitting there. She's got her nest started fairly well. I'm gonna give her some more hay. You be quiet. Here, Michael Moore. And here's Vermont Sis. You know, this is Argyle. Anyway. Well, I got the chicken tractor out here on the first couple rows where the potatoes were last year. Hopefully these guys will dig it up and eat most of the grass. You guys doing okay now? One of them without a tail way underneath. You guys got lots to eat out here. Have fun. Alright, I'm gonna go home for now. Well, for no reason, these three chicks are hiding in the corner over there. So I think I'm gonna scrape down the poop. Disturb them enough to get out of that area and get out here and mix with the others. You guys will be nice, won't ya? Where's my third one? There she is, way in the corner. Finally, we have plants growing in the first two rows. We have a bunch of lettuce over here. And uh, something on this 
right side looks different than the one on the left side. I don't think I put two different kinds of lettuce, but I don't remember what else I would have done unless I got like radishes or something over here. But anyway, our lettuce is growing. And over here, on the second row, if you look careful, you can see the long, skinny plants, two leaves sticking up. That's spinach. I was thinking at first that this stuff over here was spinach because it was two leaves, but it's not. This over here is spinach. So we have spinach growing here. Um, I don't remember even what I put in this third row. I'll have to go back and look over the videos and see. I don't see anything growing yet. Fourth row, I know I put sugar beets. I think in the first two rows, you can see that I made three different stripes with my concrete rake. And I'm pretty sure I put sugar beets in the first two and mangles in the third. Not for sure, but. All right, let's go see how our onions are doing after two nights below z below freezing. Yeah, they could probably use some water. I think I'll water both of those over here. I've got rutabaga springing up for sure, two of them at least. That'll give me seeds. Maybe one more here. Maybe one more there. Got a few onions mixed in here. Our strawberries are popping out. First of May in a couple days. They're starting to pop out really good. The two rows of garlic in the middle are completely dead. They got froze harder than a rock. All right, I'm gonna water the onions before I leave. But at least stuff over here is getting started. Oh, I put carrots in one of these. Maybe that's what I did in the... Actually, I may have done sugar beets in this one carrots in the first two rows of this one and then um, mangles in the back side. Carrots take a lot longer to come up so that's all right. I think, I think we're doing fine. Time I share with you the gospel of Jesus Christ. According to the Bible in Romans 3.23, all of us are sinners and we do not measure up to God's perfection. Romans 6.23 says, The penalty of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes, Jesus came to earth as a man to pay the price for the sins of mankind. Romans 10.13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, saved from the penalty of eternal death. The payment Jesus made for our sins is only available to those who believe and trust in his fulfillment of God's promise to save the world from their sins. If you want to take part of the resurrection of life, you must believe and accept the gift of eternal life that Jesus has provided. Or you could reject the gift and take part in the resurrection of damnation unto eternal death. God loves you and has provided a means of eternal life if you will believe and accept the gift. I have accepted and my life has been changed as the Bible 
tells us it would. I'd like you to consider joining me and all of God's disciples in eternal life. If you want more information, you can email me at crunchtime at roadrunner.com. Until next week, God bless you and yours. And we'll see you again on Crunch Time with Chef Francois.